Welcome to a golden new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Persona 4 Golden just got announced and released on Steam, and you know what that means! This announcement really came out of the blue. Or maybe I should say, came out of the purple? No, I shouldn't, because that's th th that's not an expression that doesn't mean anything. But I just can't let a Mega Ten game come out without giving you all a new episode of the show. So take those tops off and sharpen those swords, because today we're talking about Yakshini. And to a lesser extent, Yaksha. Yakshini are magical women found in Hindu mythology and also appear in Buddhism, Jainism, and other religions of the area. They are typically benevolent servants of the god of wealth, Kubera, alongside their male equivalent, the Yaksha. What's perhaps the most interesting about them is how there are two very different histories regarding who they are and what they do. Earliest depictions of the Yakshini have them portrayed as naked women with HUGE boobs, and in quite a few texts, such as the, sorry I'm gonna butcher this, Udamarashvara Tantra, there were 36 specific Yakshinis who when summoned would perform different tasks for you. Some would give treasure or medicine, while some would grant powers like super speed. And then of course some would just rub all over you with their SERIOUS HONKERS. However, in the southern states of India, like Kerala, the Yakshini took on a very different role. Rather than being beautiful, benevolent, lustful women with a real set of badonkers, they were depicted much more like vampires, demons, and succubi from other mythologies. Specific Yakshini became the subject of both Hindu and even Christian stories as being these blood-sucking temptresses rather than the helpful sexual beings of love and fertility that they were originally associated as. Yakshini's compendium entry from Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne refers to them as semi-divine beings in Hindu mythology. They are the female equivalent to Yakshas. They are followers of Kubera, the god of wealth, and have come to represent wealth themselves. What's fairly interesting is this is one of the only compendium entries that specifically acknowledges that Yakshini is more a collection of beings than a singular figure, as other games, like Persona 4, refers to her as a female demon in Hindu myth, originally a Dravidian fertility goddess, the spread of Hinduism changed perception of her to a demonic figure, usually depicted as a voluptuous nude female. It's possible that these other compendium entries refer to one of these specific stories regarding an individual Yakshini, such as, again, sorry if I'm gonna butcher this, Kanjiroto Yakshi, a sadistic courtesan who ended up killing the wife of one of her servants she fancied. So he ended up killing her, but she was reborn as a Yakshini, grew into a beautiful woman in moments, and after drinking the blood of many innocent men, attempted to marry the man she loved. This story did originate in Kerala, so it's quite possible Megami Tensei draws from this particular tale. Then there are also Yaksha. They're like the Yakshini, but instead of women, who are packing some Doban Hankaros, they're males who are typically seen more as nature spirits rather than fertility spirits, and they focus more on being warriors rather than magic users. There's a pretty good balance between them. Design-wise, you may notice that Yakshini in Megami Tensei does not have the MASSIVE DA HUNKA BANKA LOSE that we often hear the Yakshini have, and in fact clearly see the Yakshini have in many of the statues and artwork built in their honor. This is because the Yakshini in Megami Tensei seem to draw much more heavily in their inspiration from the more demonic ones seen in the southern states. Yakshini is definitely depicted as a beautiful, mostly naked woman with demonic features, and typically has fangs, as a recurring part of the mythos involves them being bloodsuckers. Kaneko said a big part of Yakshini's design is how her hair doesn't move, which makes sense because it might change the rating if the- Hey! Stop that! It it's not going to work! Knock it off, you perv! It's also worth mentioning that Kaneko intentionally incorporated Yakshini into other demons, such as Dakini and Taraka, both of whom were influenced by the purple succubus. What's perhaps most interesting is not Yakshini's design, but the lack of Yakshini's designs, as she's pretty much stayed the same since this well-known version from Shin Megami Tensei 2 never even getting a version with big ol' Tanhanga Rakugas. Whereas the Yaksha, a demon who definitely has less of a presence in modern Megaten titles, has had not one, not two, but three separate Kaneko iterations. 
The original SMT2 design seems to draw parallels to Yakshini herself, giving them a shared resemblance, which is always pretty cool to see. Then there was the Devil Sumner design, which showcased them a bit closer to how they were shown in many statues of Jainism, and the Soul Hackers design, which has them more as warriors, and seems a bit closer to the figures you'd see in Buddhist depictions. Funnily enough, it's Yaksha's Devil Sumner design that has even bigger Bakhanaga hooks than Yakshini herself. As far as game history goes, Yakshini is perhaps best known for her small role in Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, where she's fought as a boss battle during the second trial after the Demi Fiend is arrested by the Mantra Demons. Yakshini also has a couple of small roles in the Persona series. In Persona 1, Yakshini, or Valkyrie as she was known in Revelation's Persona, is one of the necessary fusion ingredients to get the Persona that graces the game's box, Vishnu. In Persona 5, Yakshini is known by the shadow name Human Eating Lady, again leaning more towards the demonic depiction of her mythos. Yakshini also appears in the Mementos mission, Sadism is Just a Sign of Love, where Hikari Shimizu's shadow will transform into her perhaps as a clever nod to Yakshini being both a lover and destroyer of men at the same time. And then there's Yaksha, who appears as an optional boss fight in Shin Megami Tensei If, and while not appearing directly in any of its demonic forms, Yaksha is a category of enemy types in Digital Devil Saga 2, primarily used by bosses as well as other major characters such as Roland's Indra. Speaking of Yaksha appearing in 3D, despite having three different designs, the only one that's ever been graced with a 3D model was his original design appearing in the MMO title Shin Megami Tensei Imagine. Perhaps D2 or Shin Megami Tensei 5 will rectify this in the future, but we'll just have to wait and see. And so there you have it, Yakshini, the heavenly Hindu harem hotties who happen to have humongous hungalanga no no logangus. And also Yaksha's there too. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.